Please welcome Helix. Welcome to the Blythe Theater and the uh, Helix Unplugged show. Helix is 45 years old, almost. Yeah! That's a hell of a lot of years. In fact, I would lay bets that a few of you people out there weren't even born, weren't even a sperm of an idea when Helix first started playing the bars back in 74. And that is precisely why I've decided to put down into this little poem a little uh, Helix history lesson of sorts for all you people that might not realize the background of the band. It's called The Story of Helix, and it goes like this. Maestro. Once upon a time, way back in 1974, five long-haired guys got together in Kitchener, Ontario. They were looking for a party. They were looking for fortune. They were looking for fame. And Helix would become our name. So we hit the road. When we rocked and we fought our way across a great white north, see the shining sea. From Vancouver Island to Halifax, and all points in between. And a half hour later in Newfoundland. <laughs> well, Hack played the strap. The doctor, he played an ES-335 Gibson guitar. Half and more the official NFL approved, NBL approved, and FL approved. Peter Pan getaway boots. Peter Pan getaway boots. Come on, get on the ball here, will you? The doctor sang about a guy named Billy Oxygen, who only had 14 days to fly. Together we played every shithole, every smelling of piss, puke on the carpet, rock and roll bar from coast to coast. Six to seven nights a week, three to five sets a night, but a Saturday afternoon matinee. We had craft dinner and we made shit money. But we loved it. You know why? Why? Because we were rock and roll gypsies living on fringe benefits. And then, in the early 80s... Anybody out there remember the 80s? We got any old school rockers out there in the audience tonight? In the early 80s, the unthinkable happened. Helix was signed to a worldwide big money U.S. record deal with none other than Capital EMI Records, the same label as signed the Beatles, for God's sakes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had it made in the shade, as they say, or so we thought. You know what EMI stands for? You know what EMI stands for? Every mistake imaginable. 1983 was a good year to be a heavy metal love in the MTV, and so we took our unique brand of Canadian metal from the Great White North south of the 49th parallel to the U.S. of A. to play with a guy named Lemmy Kilmeister and his Ben <laughs> And then we skipped across the pond to tour Europe with the world's hottest band, KISS! From Helsinki, Finland, to Lisbon, Portugal, 11 countries in 32 days. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we were living the rock and roll dream. We had the platinum albums, we had the gold albums, we had the tours, we had the girls, we had the cars, we had the drugs, we had just about everything you could possibly imagine. And then along came the 90s. 
and everything just went to shit. Now, whereas the 80s were very kind to the Helix Band, the 90s, not so much. In fact, if you got to get right down to it, the 90s sucked! Can we hear everybody say that in count of three? The 90s, one, two, three. Fuck! Yeah, I agree. We felt as if there was this little black cloud over our head raining down tragedy, negativity, and bad vibes. The 90s almost spelled the death, D-E-A-T-H, of the band Helix. What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Like a phoenix, we rose from the ashes. We got leaner, we got meaner, we got stronger. And then one day, in 2008, fate collided with the rock and roll guys and boom! The 1980s version of Helix was back together again. Brett the Dr. Derner, Greg Fritz Heinz, Daryl Gray, and myself. Plus this young kid, who looked like Jesus Christ and he called himself the Nut Man. We got back together and it was Helix reunited and the rock and roll guys looked down and they saw that it was good. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now Caleb has been in the band for 10 years. That's a decade. Got it? Decade? Caleb Duck? As such, he's written his own chapter in the story of Helix. So give him a hand, come on! Thanks for having me on the hey. Back here in the drums. Back here in the drums. A member since 1982. His first gig was playing accordion in a German oompa pa band. Ladies and gentlemen from Cambridge, Ontario, the original Mr. Rock and Roll Oktoberfest, Greg Prince Heights. Give me a hand! <laughs> On my left hand side, representing the Irish contingent in the band Helix, a member since 1984. From Belfast, Northern Ireland, where he quit his day job as a terrorist to come to Canada and play bass for the Helix Band. Would you give a warm hand for Mr. Daryl Skull and Cosmos Gray? In 2014, the good doctor decided to retire from the band Helix. And we knew, because Brent was such a huge part of the Helix story, that whoever we got to replace him was going to have to feel pretty big Peter Pan getaway boots. Peter Pan getaway boots. <laughs> when I get on the ball. <laughs> Where are you, Chris? Yeah. There he is. Mr. Yeah. Great Guy. Bring it in hand for him. From Cambridge, Ontario. Mr. Smiley, Mr. Happy, the Peter Pan and the Peter Pan. Christopher Jokey on the guitar. My name is Brian Fulmer. Thank you. I'm the only one crazy enough to been in this band for 45 years. Almost. People keep asking me, hey man, when are you going to retire? And I tell them, never! They say you're getting too old for this shit. And I say, well, Rock and roll is a family youth, and I keep getting younger every single day. Oh. And then they suggest that I take this band of merry men and just head into the sunset, and I tell them, coulda, shoulda, woulda, and 25 cents will buy you a donut, so don't be square, I'll see you around, catch you on the flip side, because we're going wild in the streets tonight at the Blythe Theater. Yeah. 